In this video, I'll be kicking off my Vanadil vlogs, documenting my experience on the Final Fantasy XI private server Eden. Immediately following the acquisition of my sub job on Nasomi, I decided to check out Eden to see how the experiences differed, and I've been loving it so far. Of course, unlike my first mostly solo weeks on uh, Nasomi, I I've started with a group of people this time. Uh, the Mog House, Andrigan from Andrigan Gaming, both kind of started the same day I did. Our start was full of more amazing, like notorious monster fights that we grouped up on, uh, group boat rides, uh, frightened runs to available outposts that we know we'd need like in our 30s and 40s, but couldn't even touch yet. So let's get into some of that frustration and hilarity and stick around to the end on which private server experience I thought was the better one and why. But otherwise, let's get right into it. If you're new here, this is Hunt for Games, sharing my tips and passions for classics like Final Fantasy XI, as well as jumping on new games that I hope are going to be the next big one to steal my life away. If that sounds like something you're about, consider subscribing, and if you've been here before, welcome back. But let's get right back into the first 20 levels of my experience on Eden. Alright, so this is going to be a little bit faster. The first 20 levels on Nasomi were my first three vlogs, which I've included in the description below if you haven't checked them out already. Obviously, this one's going to go a little bit faster because there was a lot that was kind of the same. First 10 levels are a little rough, uh, a little slow, and, and unfortunately, kind of alone. We did try to group up in our first, like, you know, three to seven, which I remember back when I was playing Final Fantasy XI, we never grouped up when you were under 10. It just didn't seem like a good idea, but I didn't really remember why. But yeah, we found that just it, it wasn't worth it when you're leveling against easy prey, decent challenge, even even match. You just get nothing when you group as three people and you're not killing fast enough to make up for it. I also began to notice that like XP gain itself was a little bit slower in Eden than Nasomi. Not like noticeably so up until like level seven, then all of a sudden you're like, what the hell? Poor Andrigan didn't even realize he didn't have Signet. Apparently Signet does offer like a tiny little XP bonus on, on Eden, which is pretty crucial. But yeah, he kept wondering, he's like, why are you guys leveling faster? We're at the same exact point and you guys keep leveling sooner. We're like, you're getting less XP, but I don't know why. I'm pretty sure that Eden is closer to what what retail actually was. I remember when I was leveling on Nasomi, I couldn't believe that I accidentally got to like level 14 on Red Mage without a sub job, just like soloing things. I never made it really anywhere past 10 soloing on, on retail back in the day. I was just kind of like, yeah, I, I've got to go to the Dunes now. I was fighting for level 10, not like, whoops, I made it to 12, oh, and 13. So some things that I've noticed about Eden and things that I just, you know, have experienced, there are more people involved in the Eden project than there are in Nasomi. Nasomi is pretty much just him, Nasomi. Uh, Eden has a few developers, multiple GMs, a lot of people available for support if you have questions or just have a problem or, you know, whatever. First night we streamed, we had a bunch of GMs show up in chat, just kind of chatting about things going on with Eden. It was, it was really cool. We had a couple questions. We're like, is this normal? Is this expected? And they were there ready to answer stuff. And it, it's cool to see that kind of engagement with the community. And it's just nice that it's not just like one person that you're always relying on for updates or just general help. Eden itself has a lower population, I and mean, there are pros and cons to that. It's generally more about five to 600 uh, on average that I've seen, and, and Nasomi is a little bit like twice that. But I've actually kind of enjoyed it. I mean, the dunes on Nasomi were packed, and it was really cool to see all that engagement and everybody like just going nuts in the dunes, and it's, it's fun to see that many people playing classic Final Fantasy XI. But it was nice that on Eden it's a little bit more normal number of parties and stuff and you can find camps and you're not like constantly fighting 10 other people for every notorious monster that you're looking at. It was it was cool. I appreciate the slightly lower population. But yeah, otherwise, I mean, I started with Monk this time, so I got to 10 a little bit faster than I did on my Red Mage, just pounding away at things. And then I hopped on my Warrior, uh, but I guess that's a little bit down the way once, once I got the sub job. And my first like level 10 experience, I went back and I was doing different quests because we started in Winders this time and I was like, well oh, crap, I really need a uh, a power gi, which luckily is like a quest I can do. So I spent all this time hunting down the the quest for the power gi, which is a you know a couple little steps in in the quest chain, but it was worth like 30k on the auction house. So I'm like, well, once I'm done with it on my monk, this is gonna be awesome. I can sell it back for like a ton of money because the the auction house, the economy is super active, and this is the difference both on Nasomi and and Eden. But all the auction houses are linked. Um, which wasn't the case in retail, but it is, it's kind of benefit. It, it, I, I miss the old days when it was like every auction house was different, but you basically couldn't trust this normal city auction houses at all, and you just had to always go back to Juno, which was kind of annoying. Like, if you just wanted some gear while you're leveling at level one, you're like, oh my gosh, like, you don't even have the, the rings in, in Winders. I can't even get the, the int and the agility ring. <laughs> just like stupid stuff like that. So Monk House and I basically made a tent at the same time. Andrigan, of course, 
way behind now. He was like level nine or something. But we're like, all right, let's head out to the dunes. So I go and get on the boat, but we both immediately die. This is one of the few times that we had like a, a glitchy experience. And actually since then, basically the only one we've ever had. But there was this ghost that was, a ghost notorious monster was popping every boat ride at night. If it was nighttime, ghost notorious monsters popped. I've never even seen this guy in retail, but apparently he's very specific uh, conditions that you have to meet for this guy to pop. It was a bug. He was popping and aggroing through the floor. So we would like immediately die. It happened to us like twice. And I have to say, that was the closest I came to stopping. Because I'm like, oh my God, we ran all the way out to the boat. We waited for the boat. And then we died of this like stupid bug. But it honestly has been like the only bug I've experienced. We figured out if you go during the day, obviously you're fine. Or if you know you pop in at nighttime and you kind of run to the little back stairwell, you're also fine. It's not a big deal. At the time, I was just confused, and we did ask a few people, and they're like, "Oh yeah, that's a known a known bug." But uh, for the rest of the experience, it's, it's been great. But you know, it's kind of one of those things that it didn't really feel. After that, I was like, "This is just something I've I've got to learn about Eden." You know, just like I learned things about how to experience retail Final Fantasy XI. This is just an Eden thing that's like a little bit different that I can now like readjust my my understanding of formulas and and what do I have to do in this in this game it is it's fun it was cool so we finally made it to, to uh the dunes and i had to say on nisomi i lucked out like day one and got the dunes outpost so i was i was going back and forth between home and the dunes and back and it, it took me weeks and weeks and it's an, uh, an upcoming video far down the line before i ever got close to the dunes outpost on eden sandori had it locked down and we were just kind of sitting there like, I, I guess this is just our life. And it did kind of stink because like I had to go back and get Signet every time from Winders and then like boat ride back out. I had Kolshushu <laughs> so I could kind of like get halfway there. But it was pretty tough as a Windersian to get back and forth from the dunes. And that's what I experienced back on retail when I started. I didn't have the outpost for the dunes forever. But it was fun. It was just like, it was rough. So we, we got a bunch of parties. We're, we're all leveling up. It was a lot more fun trying to do that as like a... A full group. It took a lot longer. Uh, Nisomi was a lot faster because the XP you're getting is just like a little bit faster. I'd love to know the numbers, but it, it's definitely a faster experience. But Eden was a little bit closer to uh, like the normal kind of camps. Like, yeah, crabs kind of suck because they, they do the strength down AoE bubble shower, whatever it is. And the defense bonus, uh, I don't know, hardened steel. What the hell is it called? I can't remember the name of the move. But there's still one of the better options at certain level ranges for just like, you know, I've got nothing else to kill. These crabs are going down. On Nisomi, nobody kills crabs. I think there's something about the camps that have been like slightly tweaked with mob pops and things. And uh, crabs are, are either appropriately or not appropriately like stronger. And it's just like nobody, nobody fights them at all. And it was cool to see like people like, you know, having camps where they kill crabs again. I was like, yeah, I want to see people at the Oasis. I want to see people at the boat. I've had like multiple boat parties myself. It's awesome. So that's been fun. But it was good having like a group of people where I'm like, hey, is anybody around to like, we're going to hop in this party and, and do that. Um, it was a lot faster than always waiting for a party with just me. So it's been great having like the Hunt for Games community has been on the link show. We have call four and now, now call five. Go check it out. But uh, it's just been, it's been cool, you know, grouping up with whoever's available, saying like, okay, we've got a warrior, white mage, black mage, thief monk. We did have one that was almost, almost the original six jobs. And then, I think I got screwed. I think, I think Gromit was there as a summoner, really ruining the whole experience. <laughs> no, but it was, it was funny. But, uh, yeah, so I was super unfortunate with the Zolkheim outpost on, uh, on Eden, because it, it's so helpful, but like, nothing for the first few weeks, but that's all right. Um. It's been good. Way fewer concerning glitchy moments than I had on Nisomi. I mean, I, I will say, Nisomi has some weird stuff. I've seen a lot of, by design, things that are different. There's a wyvern in uh, the dunes that apparently is some sort of, like, notorious monster engagement thing. It was meant to replace BCNMs years ago before BCNMs worked. I think BCNMs kind of work now on Nisomi, but um, he still has these kind of fights that you can just kind of engage in with this his wyvern. It's like a wyvern red mage. And that was kind of, like, a Nisomi choice. He's like, I think this is a fun way to kind of earn gear throughout those 10, 20, 30, 40 level ranges. In those level ranges, there's an area that has like a wyvern and you can fight it. But that's just like kind of a choice he made is like the best way to deliver a Final Fantasy XI-like experience in that classic style. 
and that a lot of people love what Nisomi has done and it's out there and, and people are enjoying it and that's great but I always was kind of like oh man that's such a weird it's not like it's not classic Final Fantasy though it's such a bizarre unique thing that that he did and it, it's neither here nor there I mean some people love it some people hate it it's, it just is what it is but it has been nice running through the dunes and not seeing any weird wyverns uh, I haven't seen any worms moving around it's a couple choices like that Nisomi uh, did to sort of drive more people to group parties but in my mind like one of the coolest thing about 11 was like if you're a ranger or a black mage like worms are a weird enemy that you can kind of fight solo and that's a benefit of being a ranger or a black mage is that you can do that nisomi tried to restrict that kind of behavior because he wants more people partying and that's cool and i appreciate why he did it but i like that the option is still there with eden I, to be clear i'm not bashing on nisomi it's just a different experience eden has tried to be more true to form more classic but the community has been amazing so far people are uh, super nice it's been a ton of fun playing as i said with like starting up with a group of people that i know we're hunting notorious monsters like level nine we're fighting level 10 notorious monsters and as you know in final Fantasy 11 a level 10 notorious monster will kill level 13 or 14 people so we're, <laughs> we're like all fighting multiple two hours going off by 100 fists immediately we've got benedictions firing off just to keep us alive it's just like stupid stuff like that, but it's so much fun to take down the dumbest notorious monster. The dumbest notorious monster, like Nun Nunyak, who has the, uh, what is it, the Pilgrim's Wand. We were, we were super stoked to get the Pilgrim's Wand drop for uh, Mog House's character, Alessa, like day three or something. We're like, oh my god, we got it. It's just just cool. So it, it took longer, it was harder. I had more travel going on because I was in Winders this time instead of Bastok and I didn't have the outpost for, for Zolkheim and there's all that stuff but maybe it is partially because I've been playing with more people that I, I know and I have really like more social chatting and engagement stuff but it's been a blast. I, I love the group Notorious Monster fights and <laughs> hunts that we've done. I love setting up groups like immediately with people that I know and are willing to talk and chat and stuff. It, it's just been awesome. The story on how I got the sub job is totally a video in itself and definitely the next Vanityo vlog to come out because it was hysterical as we all like fought to earn these sub job items because it was it was pretty tough, but totally worth it. But as, as I mentioned before, which do I prefer? I mean, I guess I kind of snuck in some reasoning here and there, but Eden definitely has the vote for me on in terms of which I've enjoyed more. But that's because of what I'm looking for. Nosomi is trying to make a classic-like experience that is more approachable for general players and drives community building and, and group teamwork and partying at, at all times. Um, even little things like how level sync works, depending on how many people are in the game, it restricts the range on level sync that'll work. So if, say there's like a million people, like the, the most amount of people you can possibly imagine. You can only level sync within like one or two levels uh, in, in theory. If there's like 10 people on, you can level sync like across like 20, 30, 40 levels. I don't know what it is. But that is a change. Like level sync didn't used to have a restriction like that. You could just level sync to whatever. But he's trying to say like, hey, if, if there are like a bunch of people within your level range, party with those people. <laughs> so I get what he's trying to do. But I do like that Eden just has a more classic... Uh, level sync rules of just like level sync with whoever you want if, if you want to level sync down with your friends and party in the dunes go for it if you want to do it in quiff mile go for it what i will say is they did make a slight change to your gear does not sync with you you have to have level appropriate gear um and i get why they were you know they're trying to create more item they're trying to create a need for the lower level items and and that helps crafting it helps the economy it helps those items still be valuable even for people that have already leveled past them I get it. It is kind of tough sometimes. Like, there's a Dread Dragon fight where I totally forgot a, uh, a Dark Dragon fight where I, I just forgot a weapon. <laughs> like, I didn't, I forgot it wasn't going to be there when I sick. But that, that's, that's just me. It's a slight difference. I, I, I get why they did it. Pros, cons, whatever. Um, but yeah, Nosomi has, has done some stuff to make an experience that, that he thinks is going to be better for the overall community and more fun. And I always appreciate when, maybe just because, like, I, I played retail, I'm like, I just, I just want what I remember. I don't I don't want too many different things if I can avoid it. I want it to be like what I remember. That's what I'm trying to experience. So I guess that's why I could sort of gravitate towards Eden. I also do appreciate that it's a slightly smaller community. 
because I'm not like jumping on top of people at, at every turn, but it is, it's busy. It's very busy. I see people on every zone I've been to. There have been people everywhere. So it's been a lot of fun. If you've been enjoying these Vanadil vlogs, let me know your thoughts on my Switch to Eden. I know that's going to be kind of controversial here up there. If, you, if you're on to Somi, you're probably going to be bummed out that I'm bit leveling on Eden now. If you're on Eden, you might be excited or maybe annoyed that I'm, I don't know, coming to Eden and bringing more attention to it. I, I'm not sure. Uh, so let me know. I want to know your thoughts. And I want to know your thoughts on the idea of a classic Final Fantasy XI server in general. We do get a lot of controversy. Uh, a lot of people think very differently on whether or not they think this would be something fun. Um... Or, or awful. I was one myself who said I could never do Final Fantasy XI in its classic form. It would take too much time, too much uh, just general time investment for things that I've already done. I would never want to do it. I said that for years. And here I am having a blast. I've been playing for, you know, like two months. I can't stop. Can't stop playing. But it's been a ton of fun. Uh, if you haven't already, check out the Nosomi Experience 3 vlog videos down in the description below. And uh, check back for more videos like this. I've got at least next to Subjob video and then plenty after that as I go on to our experiences with Quiffum and the jungles and <laughs> getting the Kazam keys and all that stuff. So I hope to see you guys back and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in more videos like this, think about subscribing. And if you already have, don't forget to click that little bell next to the sub button to get notified when new videos go live. Hit me up in the comments with your thoughts on this video or come hang out and chat with me on Twitch every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And definitely look me up on Twitter or Instagram and hunt for games to keep up with what else I've got going on. See ya.